Did you know that this is sample data that's in the Joomla core? This is some of our new sample data that's in the Joomla core. There's, there's three now three different data sets that are, that are in the Joomla core that users can load. And so um, I guess I'll, I'll start actually now that I've jumped into the punchline is to say, so my, I'm Elon Waring and um, I work on a lot of different things around the Joomla project. And one of them, by some accident of history, I kind of have become the maintainer of sample data for the 1.6 series and um, 1.6 to 2.5. And we thought a lot about um, sample data. Well, actually, I ha actually have slides that are also not loaded, sorry, uh, to be so unprofessional. But um, uh, in Joomla 1.5, in the new series, we actually talked a lot, thought a fair amount. You might think, we didn't think about it, but we did. Sample data workshop. Uh, think about what sample data should be and um, how maybe we could start rethinking sample data. So there's always been sample data in Joomla. Uh, Brian will remember some of the sample data in, from Mambo, which was really kind of appalling. I remember the first Mambo site I installed. I was very excited because it was like this idea of a content management system and we're going to be able to do this great dynamic stuff. And I had like looked around the community and saw these are really helpful people and friendly people. And then I install Mambo and it was like the this crazy website with advertising on it and it said ka and all this kind of stuff and I was like oh what is this I don't want this stuff and um, it was really a little scary and the first thing I did was like natural hacker that I am was to go in and start basically totally destroying the core template and to take out all these crazy modules that I didn't know were called modules at the time uh, but just to try to make it a sane looking website to start working from. So just to do a little a little backflash, this is what Joomla 1.0 looked like and you know, um, again, as I said about the platform, you know, we had exciting things in 2007, but today, like something like this, I think it would be kind of scary to look at as a new user and kind of what are all these things and, and it's a, it's a, it has kind of random articles that are not necessarily helpful to users and part of it is like an advertisement for Joomla but if you think about what you have when you have someone who's already installed Joomla, you don't really need to be, get, you've already made the sale. What you want them to do is not return the product, right? So um, this is kind of like a misguided idea about what we should be doing with sample data and what the messages of sample data are because the idea of sample data really should probably be about how to make, how to help people be successful with, com with actually building a website with Joomla. And because uh, the biggest thing with all the CMSs and with all, basically all software and probably all products is, you know, you get a lot of, especially when it's free, you get a lot of people who start, um, but many people who never go further. So even though we might think, I always kind of wonder, you know, WordPress is the biggest um, CMS. But did you ever, I consider the, the idea that it's possible that probably close to half of the websites started in WordPress have one post on them because many people, it's, it's easy to do that, but then how do you actually encourage people to actually use the website and make it, and WordPress is easy, right? But it's like, how do you actually get them to successfully build out a site? So, um, uh, I always found the 1.5 sample content kind of bizarre because it was both this combination of like advertising for Joomla and then a lot of inside jokes and inside the community stuff. Like does the average user really care that the Joomla community portal is open for business, right? Um, and there used to be the even kind of creepier thing that was like the pirate talk between like Johan and Wilco about drinking rum and whatever and it was like is this something that's really inviting and 
encouraging users to actually engage and no, not so much. So for better or worse, with, um, with the 1.6 series, pretty early on, um, I kind of said, can we think about what sample data should be? And I made a, a Google document that I shared with maybe like 30 different people. And I said, well, first off, let's think of who our users are. Like, who is it that isn't possibly installing sample data? And basically thinking about it, I came up with these three groups, beginners, upgraders, and professionals. So beginners being people who've never built a website before, upgraders being people who are upgrading coming from a previous Joomla instance, and maybe just, and the thing is, most of the time as an upgrader, for your actual site, you wouldn't be installing new sample data, but if you wanted to just look around and see what the new, the new version looks like, you might install sample data and before you actually try to migrate. And then professionals, meaning people who are like web professionals, but who haven't used Joomla before. <clears throat> so they might be using it for a new client or they might be looking for a tool if they're not satisfied with what they're doing. So I kind of thought about these three audiences and just dramatically reduced the number of articles that were in sample data to basically these simple articles about these three users these three groups of users, and then um, you know some information about what is Joomla, but most importantly, in my opinion, um, oops, this is a, this ah, because I'm pretending I'm not on a, I'm pretending I'm on a live Most importantly, in my opinion, ah, uh, the using Joomla sub. Uh, menu item which kind of talks about how do you actually start to use a Joomla website. So, and, right. Every. Exactly. So there's a third audience in here that's unmentioned, which is, is actually developers of Joomla. And it's very important for developers of Joomla and the Bug Squad in particular, but, but not just because the platform actually uses some pieces of sample data in their tests, in their unit tests, uh, is to be able to test. So that's one re there are two reasons why every core view is linked from the main menu. One is so that a user, a beginning user, or probably more likely not a beginning user, but more likely a professional user or maybe an upgrader could actually say, oh, here's what the options are. Or here's what each of the modules are, right? Which is in those core things. But actually, it also means for the bug squad that we have a rendering, a standard rendering that we can run system tests against, um, that of every single core view and every single core module. So that that's actually really helpful because then you can. Well, that's no. I agree. Well, I agree. That's that's what that's where I'm going. The bug squad should have sample. The bug squad. No, the bug squad should have its own sample data. That's the thing. So right now, so historically, we had one package of sample data, but now. Yeah, right. We're self-interested, right? Um, but in but in fact, in, two, in the, this series, we actually have this new option that we had not been using where you could actually install, have options for more than one kind of sample data. And so um, in this instance of the 2.5 release, we actually added two additional sets of core sample data. Uh, one is a simple brochure site and one is a simple blog site. And they're much smaller. Um, the sample blog basically looks like this. It uses bees and um, it just has uh, the welcome to your blog and you, um, if you, it, I, you can't really read this probably, but it says if you log into the site, the author login link is on the bottom of this page, you'll be able to edit it and all the other existing articles. You'll also be able to create a new article. And as you add a modified mod, uh, articles, you'll see your site changes and also how you, cut you, how you can customize it in various ways. Go ahead, you can't break it. Right, so that's the opening 
greeting to maybe a potential new user. And I'm not saying it's like the perfect thing, it's not, it's just something I came up with, but I think that's how we should be thinking about sample data. We should think about groups of users and how do we address them in a way that's friendly and gives them what they need. Um, so this is the sample blog site and it just shows you instead of having so many Oh, I always hated the old sample data had, the, the 1.0 sample data had like so many modules all over the front page. This just really has what you would have on the blog, which is, you know, a home, home link and an about link and then, you know, a, mo a module with your most recent posts and a blog role maybe, uh, most read posts. Kind of typical, very, very simple blog site. Of course, we don't have commenting, but... Um, whatever. <laughs> and this is the sample brochure site. So um, this basically is uh, a very simple brochure, you know, five page brochure site with um, a home page, uh, about us page, news for if you wanted to post new news items and a contact form. And um, it just basically says, okay, here's a side module. You can go into the back end and edit it or you can put a link to your social media, whatever you want over here. Go right here, click on the login link at the top of the page and um, you can edit this and put whatever you want as your homepage. So again, um, and, and when you log, oh, this is the header module. You can edit this in the module manager and your administrator. Put a large image here. If you make that image about 150 pixels wide by 180 pixels high, it will fit nicely. You could put text or a mix of images and text if you prefer. Like tell them what to do to make a simple site. Make it simple, put it simple sentences, make it easy to translate. So this is actually a hands-on workshop. So I'm going to say why, you know, we have to think about why do we have sample data? I think we have sample data, I, I have an opinion, obviously, as I do on everything, um, is to help empower users to do what they want to do. So we need to think about different target audiences. So one thing I want to do is talk about who are the target audiences for sample data? Who are some of the audiences who we should be thinking about? Right? Who should we be writing new sample data for? Who are not the target audiences for sample data? So on the whole, like, I don't think that professional site, Joomla site, site implementers are the target audiences for sample data. I think on the whole, they may want to have their own sample data that they use with their clients, but that's a client audience. As a tar if you're someone who installs 50 Joomla instances a week or a year, you don't really need sample data unless you're doing testing. Yeah. No. Right. Uh, it's a little bit of an Easter egg. <laughs> right. It still defaults to the same one, right? It's a bit of an Easter egg. It, it would be nicer to have a, you know, a list, a full list show. Especially as the UI Right. 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 It never dropped. Right. It was this drop down that didn't drop because it was like a, you know, a facility that we were not using basically. So. No. 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 It's been a drop down for since one. Oh, two five. Yeah, two five. Actually, it wasn't even two five. It was two five one. Because remember, it was too late. Because we had to do. We had to translate that one string on the drop down. Yeah, and say that it was in English, because like potentially. Um, yeah, that's that's right. Oh. Well, that's. Where's my? Well, that's that's my. I just want to, yeah. So, so, so this is why we have this workshop because, in principle, when Javier is done and we know how to pull stuff from from the Joomla Joomla websites during install, right? So we can pull live data down. We'll be able to pull um, sample data, different formats of sample data, down from Joomla.org. I just want to show you what it. Okay, well, let me. I just want to show you what I. How this is when you go in. So, um, 
you know, obviously when you go in, it's got a lot more of these things, and it's like, here's how to edit the different things. And one of my goals, just, this is just so as we think about how do we work with it, like one of my goals was not to make anybody installing one of these two go to the administrator until far into the process, till after they learned how to edit the article, after they learned how to make a web link, you know, that kind of thing. So, yes, go ahead, Sorry. Brian. <laughs> um, the, my, my view is to put my day-to-day uh, -day job as a trainer um, hat on. The default, uh, the default sample data, which is great, the problem is it's a meh. It's confused. Right. Because it's confused because it has the section which is sample sites. Right which is great, you know, you've got the park site and the other one, and you've got the training side of the site, well, the bug testing type of the site, where you've got all the, the modules included. And actually, you end, it, it, currently, I don't believe it serves either of those purposes well. I would suggest, I, my, if you think about it, the, as you said, it's the first install uh, that you're going to do, it's got to be the best impression. And because that's trying to do too many things, it doesn't give the best impression. So, so first of all, I'd like to see two extra sets of, of sample data. One is the bug testing one. In other words, install stuff for, testi for testing purposes, and so you can see what your template's going to do. Maybe it's got a typography page and things like that, like a lot of the template club do. The other one, which is the one that's to to show off Joomla in its best practice, in its best practice, I might call it training data, right? As a as a trainer, one of my biggest problems is installing Joomla very quickly for a client, and then showing them blog category and blog links and things like that. Because we don't act, half the categories don't have read mores in, and the other ones are too short and things like that. I saw um, in September, uh, October, I was doing a presentation, and it was a joint presentation between me doing Joomla and someone else doing Umbraco. Now, Umbraco is an ASP um, CMS. Um, yeah, it's another CMS. What they did that was really nice is in their installer. So their installer is almost it could have been stolen from Joomla. Yeah, it's almost identical, but doesn't have that sample data question. Yeah? So you go, you do the, the install exactly the same way as you do Joomla, but when it's finished, you have a one-page Umbraco website. Oh, sorry, it's a four-page Umbraco website. And the first page of it says, right, nice big as part of the website, so you're not limited to a little text string that says blog data. It's a big picture and a description with a read more so you can read everything of the sample data packs what you're going to get. So it's doing it through Umbraco. You then, I want to have a training sample data, I want to have a blog sample data, etc. You click on that button and it then does the installation of the sample data. So when you finish that, that te the, the install Umbraco website is now gone and you've now got the Umbraco website set up exactly where. So you're not limiting yourself to those few characters 32 characters, but 32 characters you've probably got in that drop-down menu. Yeah, which is which is which is which is, which is, which is exactly what Umbraco's. Um, I mean, I don't care how it's done, but you know, and, it, and it's an issue. For example, it says blot. It says some. Right now, it says sample data brackets English, and I'm presuming if you do Spanish, you end up with sample data bracket. Well, whatever sample data is in in Spanish. Well. Yeah, but, it, but even so, you know, it's, you're limited to a very s short string. And maybe you don't even know what a brochure website is. Exactly. Yeah, or you don't know what, you know, um, so that, that makes a big, you know, that, well, I was really, I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> Right. Well, and I want to say that just a little history of how, also how the, sam the current big sample data came to be, which was originally um, when they were uh, starting to plan 1.6, the idea would be that there was going to be this business, special business template that was going to be in there, and there was going to be a special personal template that was going to be in there, and then there might be a third template that would just be the base template. And so I was kind of given the task by Hannes, actually, of saying, okay, so like write some content for this sample business site and the sample personal site. 
but then the templates never happened. So, so then Angie actually ended up making this second, this personal style for the Australian parks. And I would say this: if, if a group of trainers, right, they're out there in the training world, could get together and just create. Don't create. Don't worry about that, creating sample data. Just, just create a general yeah. website. Yeah, yeah, that's all you do. That, that, that's what we're going to have. Though. Right. 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 Because it's about it. Right. Yeah. It, right. Exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, it doesn't matter what we do, yeah, yeah it, it's kind of like a wasted effort until you get the selector because... Um, well, but it all has to happen. I mean, in other words, we, but it's an easy, there's an easy short-term fix, which is just to blow that thing up so that you see that there's a choice. Yeah. 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 And maybe change the default. Maybe the training one should be the default. I don't know, you know, the, but there's no reason why the current one has to be the default. I think what you said also with Umbraco that it should be a little bit more visible. Maybe just uh, three um, thumbnails and beneath it uh, blogging business. Yeah, not too much, but a little bit more visible than just a drop down. So the way it works right now is there's actually a, f a form field type called it's called sample data, and so it just kind of reads everything with the sample name at the beginning. But there's no reason it has to use that format, right? So we could definitely make something more ex more accessible and useful to people. Um, the other thing I would say, like, you know. It's really frustrating for me because, like, I spent all this time on the fruit shop site explaining how to use the ACL, but most people never even get to the point where they're reading that part of the site to explain how to use the ACL, right? So it's like that's the whole point of the fruit shop site is to understand ACL, just yeah, like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing is is about that, and it's like if you log in, you'll see, if you read it, it says like you know if you log in, you'll see new modules because, and you'll see some, and if you make a customer group. You'll have new modules, right? That only show to your customers. Would we, agree that the, would we agree that the training one would be the default? So, the, I mean, you've got to, it, it's, it's difficult. Um, I wouldn't have what we have right now as a default. Yeah. Um, if I look at the sort of stuff I've mocked up for some clients when I'm doing training. It's okay, you know, it works great as a training one because it showcases everything you want it to showcase, but it doesn't necessarily g give the, a great first impression. Is it going to give you success? So I think maybe we could also focus with the training one, what um, most of the website have in common. So a kind of news front page uh, about us, something like, and contact. This all of the sites have in common. This may, maybe we just focus, which is the lowest or the, the, the most common part. Right? So this is what I mean by early success, and that's basically what both of the new sample data have. That structure of having a contact form, having a home, a simple home page, not having a huge menu, and um, just like encouraging people to start making content right away. And one place I looked at was Drupal Gardens because also they have a similar kind of idea where as soon as you register there, they give you basically a site with a, like two articles on it, and, and it says like, click here and start writing, and and. And it's very engaging and very easy to click here and start writing. I actually think a lot of people who are the ones installing Joomla are not the same people who are probably the clients of trainers because those are usually not the super admins. I mean, to some extent it is, but to some extent, like to get to the point where you want to be able to be trained to use more of the features of Joomla, you have to already have had some success in terms of just being able to get it running. If you look at, say, the demo site where they're loading up 22,000 people a month, like, do those people want to, like, spend three hours like like having a review of everything Joomla. No, they want to, most of the time, they want to know how to change the template and they want to know how to write an article. 
I, I was going to comment. I think in keeping with that, you mentioned cloud access right there with the, with the demo and, and what we were talking about earlier with the work that Javier is doing for Summer of Code. It would be nice to make it so that companies like cloud access or OS training or something like that can load, can make it easier to load their own sample data. So somebody is starting an OS training course. They can do that in like, I have a fact for how to do that at home from now. They could, if they're not doing that, now OS cloud access has Data right. the contract said, but as Gary said to me, now that we have more data in the core, maybe OSM would let me give them either load the brochure site or load some or give people a choice because I think it would actually really help. Of the three now, which which should be the default? <laughs> <laughs> Should they be presented? Sorry, the, the question was of the three, which should be the sample, and my answer is none of the three. Yeah, but so we can write something. Yeah, it's really, it's. I mean, I mean, it, technically, it's technically it's not, and it's te technically it's not a big challenge. No. Um, well, I'd be, in, I'm, I'm interested to know about how the sample data is done. You know, what's the situation with the non-English language packs? Um, oh, God, I'll give Murray. 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 <laughs> Things. Well, actually, I'm making the Dutch sample data. I've made the Dutch sample data, and um, I can put it default by an extra localized XML. So that's what we did. We we um, tried to do a little bit of translating um, the the default sample data that was um, in one six, but we found out it's too much modules for us. Too much. Uh, um, uh, up pages and we we tried to um, combine it a bit and what we did was making a sort of blog about the Dutch community, how the Dutch community works, how we have Joomla days, how we have user groups, how where pe people can find documentation and things like that and we tried to make a sample blog website out of that so it's more like it's catching two flies. The Dutch language sample data is a not not a translation. It's partly a translation and partly made ourselves. And of the other languages, how many other languages have sample data? Um, well, it's mostly the, 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 the little bit older translation um, uh, teams that are doing it, like the Norwegian I know, and I think the German, but I'm not sure. Uh, you think Jan Tom? Jan yeah. The Swedish did, uh, Spain does, um, I think Italian also, but they are, yeah, I don't know if they already made their own, um, well, it's more, more mostly translating. In 1.5 it was all, all translating it, and in, um, since 1.6 we could have our own, and, and people can have an option to install the default English or, um, or, or the Dutch, and we put the Dutch on top as default because, of course, obviously, if you if you download a Dutch package, you want it have in Dutch. But actually, one of the interesting things, things Potentially, now, Jean-Marie and I had a big argument about this, um, because, not surprisingly, um, because one of the things is if you actually wanted to dem to be able to show how to make a multilingual site, would be it be nice to be able to install two languages worth of sample data, right? <laughs> I did, a, I did a little sample of that and people with an explanation how to turn on the plugin and the module for it so they can see uh, and watch a, a multilingual website then. Okay, what, what I would like to have is just a multi-select for languages when you stall that being basically hooked up on everything and another idea I had, um, I do not know if this may be just too much, just um, maybe if it's possible just to have a small video which uh, maybe helps breaking barriers. For example, with you, you're a great talker for English audience. Yeah, so just um, say, hi, I'm Brian, just uh, please 
<laughs> cool would be also uh, small videos on the website. You see over there, <laughs> there you can edit it and <laughs> there you can log in. You know what I wanted to ask you a question uh, because uh, for the language installer project, I, I made a blog which I would like to to you participating because you you have a lot of ideas, and uh, my my question is: Do you think that during the installation we should have being uh, we could be able to install more than one languages? Don't you think that in the installation the person is only just uh, one the the main language for the sites and then being able later to install the other languages? So I think most people know from the beginning. Uh, I, I want to just have a um, national site. I just want to have German or just want to have English. Um, and some just start really like I, I want to have two languages. This, that, that, this, yes, this happens in Germany quite often. So people are going like I want to have two languages. Uh, so so most people here speak more or less decent German and more or less decent English and they s they, they're going like uh, I, 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 want, I, I, want, I want to also have target the inter international audience and German is quite I said a difficult language to learn and uh, it does not really make sense if you want to target an international audience just to expect them to understand German so uh, for a lot of companies it would make very much sense just to say oh please from the very beginning I just want to have German and English but the administration anyway is only in one language don't don't you think that uh, uh, having no 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 it's by user yeah it's by user and what Ah, it's true, it's true, it's true. This would be also uh, very much um, simple. You just go for um, main language and additional language. And that's it. May may maybe a drop down for the main language and then check boxes for additional languages. Right. Well, well, but one of the things, one of the one of the aspects of your project, though, is to have a UI in the back end for installing additional languages that's just push a button, right? As opposed to have to go download it or have to install from URL, but just say, okay, now I want French, now I want Spanish, and now I want Catalan, right? And instead of having to install it like a regular complex extension where you have to go find it and so on. So that, I think maybe by having an easier UI there, that'll solve some of these problems because once you're in the admin, you'll be able to just right away say here's the additional languages I want. And actually, I think on the back end, especially now that we're thinking about that, is we should think about what's the first message people get the first on first login. I'm really interested in this question of first login on the back end because it's it is just like a lot and like what do you do and how do you finish configuring your site, right? How do you finish configuring your site? That's actually my number one thing that I hate when I install something or go to a new thing when I've created an account on it is getting those screens because it's great when you do it the first time but when you're installing your 50th Joomla website to get that message again um, and so it's one of those things, you know, uh, uh, of course, it's one of those things where you say it depends. Part of data. Um, but this, if you're a beginner, if you're a yeah, yeah. beginner, data, maybe you get that. Mm, yeah, maybe. But yeah, but, but, but ah, there's a different, Mark, there's a different, no, but Mark, there's a difference between um, when you're installing Eclipse and when you're installing Joomla. You are likely to install Eclipse for the first time once. Yeah, you're not going to install, you know, you, if, it's one, if it's one click to turn it off. Uh, if it's one click to turn it off, uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to fight over it, yeah? The, 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 one, the one thing that I would fight over, yeah, is something that I think Cloud Access added in, but I don't remember, is one click, remove that sample data. Yeah, right. Right? If you do, if you do, because um, what most people do, yeah, from my, I mean, I see thousands of websites that have already been built. They've installed the sample data, then they've gone in and created their own website by unplugging.
publishing right. existing stuff. And usually, they don't actually unpublish it, they remove the menu link, right. so the search isn't found. It, in one point five, to give you an example, and you can test this, in 1.5 news feeds, yeah, the sample data for 1.5 news feeds was for, um, I think, ThinkGeek and uh, Linux doc news.com and something else. Do some Google string searches or some Google searches for those text strings. Yeah, I guarantee you that there's maybe a handful of websites that would want to have that published on their site. Do a Google search. You will get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of hits. That's why, that's why when we realized that, we were, yeah, we went, um, I remember we did, we realized that when, why are we advertising these for them? Yeah? I, I, yeah? I, that was actually one of the first sample data. Yeah. Decided. So that, that, it, by, that, that, so that actually is a huge, is, you, it's currently not possible to remove sample data. Yeah, you've got, well, it's a huge job because you've got, to, it's, it's even worse in 2.5 because you don't have one single trash manager, but that's a different issue. But you've got to go through and delete, uh, trash all the articles, then you've got to delete them, then you've got to trash the categories, then you've got to delete them, then you've got to trash the menu items and delete them, and then the same with the sample contact and the template, sample template styles and 554 modules. Um, you've got to do a hell of a lot to get rid of it. Oh, and the banners. Banners, yeah, exactly, and and that's a whole separate thing. Um, but uh, actually, we've been working on it. I've been ha talking with Gary about this a lot because they were doing it the wrong way. Um, th but th they did think about it. I mean, that was one of the because because the contract says they have to install sample data. So immediately he was like, I need to let my client these people get rid of the sample data. And they wrote this for 1.5. It actually works fine, but for 2.5 you can't just delete from the database, right? You have to get you have to delete using the API. And they they weren't really doing that, so they were screwing up all the 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 sites. But now they're doing it the right way with changing the asset table at the same time. Uh, but it's really, I really think that's like, I really want to have that by by 3.0 is any sample data that's there you can delete. And But it's very hard because people have to, you have to be able to track if people have created their own websites on top of it, right, you have to be able to know uh, well, no, um, no, because people edit the. Actually, I would actually do what um, Windows 8 does. Yeah, uh, Windows 8 in the the, the new WYSIWYG thing, and you, I've got it here. You can see it if you want. Um, has this nice big button. I'd like to reset my computer to its original state. Yeah, and I, th and it, you know, this will wipe everything and stuff. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now they put. The, it's, I doubt that's going to be in the final release of Windows 8 because we're only in the developer and the consumer preview. But it's. I've used it so much because you're working on it. You're trying to be stuff. It crashes. Whatever. <laughs> So that's one of the, on, on the cloud access version. It deletes everything and it warns you you're going to delete all the stuff you created. But if it's a new user, a lot of times the first round of stuff they created, they don't really want anyway because they were just using it to learn and now they're ready to make a polished thing. The problem is, but I'll just tell you, there's like a, uh, it's complicated because when I was making the data, I said, couldn't we just have a different user make the data, right? But you can't because then that user needs to be, the user ID needs to be in the user table and then they have to have a password and then it was like, would there, you can't have a, the, you know, a password in the sample data, right? That can't, that's not possible. And so it was like, no way. So then I made Joomla, I made an alias. So all of them actually have Joomla as the alias author for the author. Um, so at least like it's con conceivable. It's actually quite, I mean, I would suggest it's actually quite easy. You do a export of the super admin user mm -hmm. to a temporary table, drop the database, rebuild from the original installation yes. database, and import right. that one. It's not a huge, yeah. you know, and I, I mean, all right, I'm not a programmer, so I can't write it, but um, it, technically it's not, it's not a big deal. But, but the, yeah, but the only thing you would need to be able, as, you know, if, yeah. if I can, you know, if, if that reset to, to nothing comes in, I'd also like at the same time to, oh, I didn't install the sample data, I want to install it from the inside the admin. Yeah, so you can so you can do it. Yeah, yeah, but no, but if you think if you think about it, in the, if in the installation process you have which set of which set of installation of sample data do you want, and you have got the five or six 
yeah, that, we, that would be great to have. Take you back to the last screen. No, no, but no, but you. Oh, you mean? Oh, you mean on the resets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah of course, of course. The only, the only, the only, there's only. Well, the, yeah, but yeah, but the only problem is, is that. Yeah, but most people have wiped the installation folder, so you haven't got those. So you haven't got those files. So it, you know. But it's really just the mechanics of pulling, of empty, of Yeah, yeah. Moving that last screen outside. Comment stop. It's just moving. It's just moving the last screen right. out of com install into com admin. That's true. So that so because it's a good point. You don't have it anymore. But that's that's what you want to do. We do it. Maybe I'm misunderstanding what you're saying. But one thing that pops to mind immediately is, um, what if okay? So w wouldn't that be kind of almost a vulnerability that there's a, there's this URL somewhere that you can go to that wipes the data? I'm just saying you're just. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'm misunderstanding the proposal. Well, you you would obviously want to have a you know ACL to control who okay. who's got access to it got because it. yeah it's it's a dangerous thing. But I mean if you go into category manager, select all, yeah. click all, trash all. Right. My point was yeah. the installation itself. The no, no, no. It doesn't have ACL yet because it's not installed. Oh right, 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 right. Oh no, it would be, it would have to be. The thing is, yeah. you can't trust your super administrators. Okay. We didn't write any data, but we have a lot of good ideas, I think. Well, so what should be the default oh. sample data? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, okay. So I'll put, I'll, I'll put my foot, you know, foot in and say, uh, all right. So I'll put my foot in and say, I will write a set of sample data that I will co classify. In, from my perspective, as simplified training, not in the sense of the way that it is right now, where with a module includes in the article to show this. I'm talking about blog, blog categories, blog link, contact page, the basic stuff. The st we're also with like a typography page with all the H1s, H2s, yeah, so that people can see what the effects of it is. I, I will write that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll make a mock up, I'll make a mock up of that yeah within a few weeks Perfect. yeah then obviously it's a it, it's a it's a draft right. yeah I'll talk to I'll share it with Steve Steve Birch OS training um, get his input on it and then submit it and then you know whatever and I would l I would like that as the as the default. Change it to so it shows the whole list. Yes. That's a that's a quick yeah, change. Right there. Yeah. Um, okay. The, the you know why the fruit shop? Let me tell you, it it, it it shows you how to use ACL and it shows you too how to do alternative layouts, right? Yeah. Um, there's also another thing we were talking about uh, different languages, and I don't know if this is getting too complicated, but uh, legal terms here in Germ uh, Germany are very much differently and very, very more strict. And the thing, the thing is, um, I'm afraid of people going like, "Oh, Jomla is great, setting up a website, and maybe just some." Some lawyer just scams for uh, new websites and on yeah, and just use this poor man. If you don't know, in Germany there's a legal requirement to have a thing called Impressum, which is a physical contact address. Yeah, yeah. Um, does he have to publish on every website? Yeah, a contact, a way of getting in contact, which has to be a real physical address. It can't be a post restaurant or whatever you call it. It's not your web host, it has to be a real thing. It's actually something we looked at in the Mambo sample data. Yeah? We were going to put in an Impressum thing in the sample data because Germany was our biggest area. We just didn't because it was going to confuse the hell out of everybody else. Right. Um, but it's, there, you're, you're absolutely right. The German, if, I was, if I was writing German sample data, it would have an Impressum link. Yeah. I did a very small thing for just local thing for German to get started. Now, what I did, I just uh, uh, posted their links to to legal sites where they could inform themselves. I know this is. 
you don't want to be in the business of giving legal advice to anyone. And OSM, I guarantee you, does yeah. not want to be in the business of giving legal advice to anyone. So what we, we probably should have is come, some kind of thing that says, you know, your, lo your location probably has rules about um, websites, and you should inform yourself about them because they're different in, you know, different places. And yeah, your country will have special rules. It's just like the cookie, she I know, the cookie thing. Right. So, thank you, everyone. This has been Elin Waring, Brian Team, and Mark Dexter, half the room of Joomla, and <laughs> we thank you, thank you.